Hey there YouTube and world, are you all doing? I hope you all are doing fantastic. Oh yeah, I'm doing fantastic here. I'm going through a little bit of history of Tintin comic book. Yep, this is yet another Tintin comic book video from the computer channel hosted by me. So, I noticed something different in the Tintin comics that I used to have when I was a kid and the Tintin comics that I'm buying right now online on Amazon or eBay and it turns out that something was missing, something was wrong because, the f well first of all I'm older and I used to be a kid, I was younger and my you know, eyesight was much much better and I didn't need glasses to read but now I need glasses to read as I got older even with the glasses on I was thinking something is wrong something is off with the tint comic and I had to do some research on it and I found out that that back in 2012 Tintin comic publishers made a mistake a tragic mistake or the company Casterman makes tragic changes to Tintin so I had to click on it and it turns out that, you know, uh, a guy who bought his son Tintin comic book, the guy himself used to read Tintin comic book, he grew up reading Tintin comic book and he posted this blog online. He said, reading my son's newly purchased edition of the Seven Crystal Ball, one of my favorite Tintin books, I realized that all of the dialogue bubbles had been redrawn. The new lettering was of a much finer line, it was much more regular and for some reason I couldn't put my finger on. It was weirdly repellent. I don't mean that it was ugly. It was actually rather delicate and pretty. But I felt that somehow the text was putting me off. I couldn't get into it. So this is exactly what I'm facing right now. You see, Tintin comic book used to be published by the font called High Slop or Hay Slop or Lop, how you want to pronounce it, Neil S. Hayslop font. So this was the guy, he was the letter of the English edition of Herge's original Tintin adventures beginning with the crab with the golden claws in 1958. A cartographer in the civil service, he was found by translator Michael Turner and Leslie Lonsdale Cooper and hand-lettered all Tintin adventures in English up to the Blue Lotus in 1983. Since the publication of Tintin in the Congo in 2005, new editions have been re-lettered using a digital font based on the lettering style used in the French edition. He died in 2015. Okay, so there's also a free font based on the hype slop lettering of our Tintin font. Okay, so this was a tragic mistake on behalf of you know, Casterman, the comic book publishing Tintin com comics in America and in Canada and now in the rest of the world, I guess. So, what's actually happening is these are the later edition of Tintin comic book. And if you look at the fonts, you see they're very thin and they're slanted, they're like almost italic, but they're not. And then, you know, it's very, very thin. If you have you know reading glasses if you have problems in your eyesight this is not a good font so what Tintin used to be is this is an original adventure Tintin fonts used to be like this so this font actually goes with the artwork goes with the drawing and once you're reading it it feels like you're reading a Tintin comic book you're reading a Tintin font so that's where the new editions went wrong. This is not a Tintin comic book. This is something like a paperback comic book. You can't immerse yourself and if I read it, I try to read it very, you know, I try try really hard to read it and then even with bright sunlight such as this, I have trouble reading it because of my eyesight and when it gets darker or it's in when I'm trying to read it in the evening in the lamp lights wow that's really really worse but if you look at this font the high, high slop font this really you know comes out of the comic book you actually can read it even in very low light 
and I can actually read it without my glasses on. I don't need glasses to read this in the evening. I can read it very clearly right now. So this is what's been going on with Tintin comic forms. It's really, really bad nowadays. Tintin is losing its touch, man. This is not right. Someone needs to go back to this font somehow and, you know, revive Tintin so that we enjoy reading Tintin comics books. I only have a few of these original Tintin comic books which I was able to find on eBay, thankfully. Uh, I had to bid on them. Somebody owned it. Previous owners owned it. Just because of the font, I had to get them. These are the fonts that I love, you know. These are the fonts that you can actually read and not get sick. This is horrible. This is first of all the comic book is too small, anyways, and then the fonts are real, much more smaller. You see, you see what I'm talking about. You see this, the difference. This is really bad. This is a horrible mistake for the last eight years, and Tintin Comic Publishers has not fixed this. This needs to be fixed, man. Tintin needs to go back to where it was in its original shape, you know. Okay, so that's all I wanted to highlight on this Tintin comic book episode. And I hope this, you know, this font comes back, this high slope font. All right, all right, stay cool, everybody, and stay fantastic. Oh yeah.